Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new edition of your Pennywise podcast from Lee Enterprises. I'm your host, Terry Barr, and uh, ooh, we're going to dive into something uh, maybe many of us are dealing with these days, talking about uh, credit card debts. And Robin Sachs Frankel is here. She is a personal finance expert with Forbes Advisor. She's going to help us get control of this debt. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Robin. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Yeah. When we talk about the idea of credit card debt and just knowing what we've gone through in the last year with the pandemic, do you feel that credit card debt is higher? Did more people use their credit card so they didn't have to use their money? You know, there's a two-part answer to that question. Most of what we've seen with with the economy since the beginning of the pandemic has been what's called a K-shaped recovery. And what I mean by that is that for some folks, their savings have gone up and those tend to be the folks that obviously didn't lose their jobs. They still had an income coming in and they had more disposable income to begin with. For that particular subset of folks, they were able to save more and pay down any existing debt because they had less to spend their disposable income on. Everything was closed, right? So their entertainment, their eating out, going to the theater, those things didn't exist. So instead of spending that money that way, they were able to apply it towards building up savings or paying down any existing debts. The other subset of the economy saw uh, their, their aspects of, of savings going down somewhat. You know, if you lost your job, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, if you saw your salary decrease, for example, folks in the entertainment industry who didn't have any venues to perform in or people who worked at restaurants, they didn't get any tips. Um, for some of those folks, the economy was not as good to them and they had to dip into their savings or perhaps rely on credit cards to meet their basic living expenses. Wow. Okay. So we, we really do have that whole different, um, and I love that it's described as a K because mm -hmm. it makes it easy to understand, but that doesn't help people that have these credit card debts either. Yeah. What's the average on a credit card these days? Uh, I mean, the average balance that people are carrying, and again, it's an average across all sorts of age groups, income, states, uh, it's about $5,300 per person. Mm. And do you know who is typically carrying a credit card debt? Is it the older or the younger? Sure. I mean, in general, the younger folks, and by younger folks, I mean, you know, those 18 to about 23 to 25, they tend to have the lowest amount of credit card debt, which makes sense because their expenses tend to be lower. The highest uh, carriers of credit card debt tend to be folks aged 40 to about 55. Uh -huh. And again, that makes sense because those are the folks who uh, typically maybe they have expenses like homes, they have one or two cars, they might have families that they're feeding. Um, you know, some of those folks also still have high amounts of student debt, whereas the younger folks might still be accruing student debt. So there's a lot of factors. Is what there's a lot saying. of factors oh that go into that. Yes. What right now, you know, we're, we're feeling like things might be starting to get back to a little bit of, of normalcy, but is this still a good time if you can to try to jump in and pay down some of the debt if you are one of those people that has some credit card debt? Absolutely. I mean, there's never a bad time to pay down credit card debt. Credit card debt is what's considered bad debt, um, you know, as opposed to like debt that you incur from maybe a student loan, which helps build you towards a better job prospect or debt for a mortgage, which helps build up um, your wealth. Credit card debt is considered bad debt because it's the interest rates on it are nearly always double digit, very high. Credit card debt is designed to not be paid down easily. Um, it is just a very difficult debt to shed. Um, if you make minimum payments on your credit card balances, you'll almost never pay them off. So if it's at all possible to do things like use your stimulus check or put aside any savings to pay down your credit card debt, now would certainly be a good time to do so. Yeah. But any time is a good time to pay down credit card debt. Yeah, it makes sense. And, and we're still seeing interest rates, aren't they still somewhere around an average of like 16%? Sure. I mean, interest rates went down a little bit because they're tied into a government set rate called the prime rate. Uh, and then credit card companies sort of add their own interest on top of the prime rate. And that's sure. where they make pr profits from. But it's not like credit card interest rates dropped dramatically during the pandemic. They, In some cases, they went down a couple of points for people. But a couple of points doesn't really move the needle that much in how much your monthly payments are, especially when you're carrying a lot of debt. Hmm, okay. 
So now everybody <laughs> that's listening, hang in there because we do have some great tips on how to try to get rid of this credit card debt. I know, Robin, you mentioned a couple of different things. Um, let, let's start with uh, what looks to be the number one idea, just sitting down and creating a plan. Sure. I mean, it's pretty hard to pay off your debts if you don't have a plan to do so. You can't just, like I said, if you just keep making the minimum amounts to get by, um, if that's all you can do right now, that's certainly better than not making payments. Not making payments is probably one of the worst things you can do when it comes to credit card debt because it'll negatively affect your credit score and your credit report. But if you can make a plan, figure out how much you know you can put down every month above and beyond the minimum payment. There's two methods that people typically use when it comes to making a credit card payoff plan. One is the debt snowball method where you list the amount of credit card balances you owe from the most expensive debt to the least expensive debt. This is typically your most expensive debt is often the one with the highest APR because different credit cards come with different interest rates. You can also do what's called the debt avalanche. And that's where if you have a smaller balance on one credit card versus some of the others, you just put as much as you can towards paying off that one small debt and it can help pump you up like, okay, I got rid of this one. It's a nice psychological boost to help you get prepared because sometimes a large credit card balance can just seem insurmountable. Ugh. Is either one better than the other or just even... I guess sitting down to make a plan should should make somebody feel kind of proud of themselves that they're starting. Yeah, I mean, any again, any progress you can make towards credit card debt is a wonderful thing and will help you long term. There's a lot of um, debate about which one was better. It's I, I don't know that I can say. I think the one that gets you on track and uh, help helps you prepare and be, feel organized about paying off your debt is the one that's going to be best for you. Excellent. Okay. Um, Number two of your five tips is um, use your stimulus check. Now, I know you mentioned that a little bit earlier in this interview. Why do you suggest that rather than maybe some people are saving it or spending it, not directly on a credit card, but buying something? Why should they put it toward the credit card? Sure. And again, it depends on your own unique circumstances and needs, but credit card debt is a very expensive debt to have. So if you have credit card debt, it's costing you to, to hold on to it as opposed to taking your stimulus check is helping you save in the future because it's less payments you'll have to make in that credit card debt. So you'd be better off for the most part, and unless you have no emergency fund whatsoever, trying to knock out some of that expensive debt versus just putting your check aside for a rainy day. Ugh. It, it all makes so much sense when you're telling us about it. So thank you for this. The third tip is um, using your tax refund. That's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. I'm, I'm also going to throw in with that, you probably don't want to pay your taxes with your credit card either. <laughs> um, generally not. There, yeah. I mean, in, in general, no, you don't want to pay your taxes with a credit card. That's a whole, I, I could go on about that forever, but oh, you're generally yeah. charged a fee for paying your taxes with a credit card. So you're paying more money than you need to. Um, and and the value, even if you're paying with a rewards credit card, the value of the rewards is almost always less than the surcharge you'd pay for using your credit card to pay taxes. So yeah. it's robbing Peter to pay Paul kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um but if you are due for a decent sized refund, um, that's a wonderful thing because it's another type of windfall, um, same way as a stimulus, and you can use it to pay down debt or even some debt and put some aside in emergency savings. Um, yeah, it's, it's a refund is a great thing. Yeah, I would agree. Um, how about then a number four? Well, this makes sense. And I think um, many of us have been doing this over the last year just because of the things you mentioned earlier, cutting our spending and our expenses. And for many of us, um, we probably didn't have a choice. It just kind of came along with what life was giving us. Right. Again, most people who had some type of entertainment budget or who enjoyed going out to eat all the time or, you know, however people like to spend their leisure time, those things usually cost some money. And so by default, you know, those expenses have been cut. But it always makes sense to look towards other ways to save. You know, maybe you're getting multiple newspaper subscriptions and you want to read online instead of the physical paper. That's a way to save money. Maybe you don't need a number of different streaming services or movie services um, you know, I, I can't say what exactly it is that people are spending on that they don't need, but these are some obvious ways. If you just take a look at all your recurring subscriptions, for example, that tends to be an obvious one that people may not realize. You might have Netflix on one credit card and Hulu on another, and maybe, you know, maybe you're not watching all that much TV anymore. Maybe you're 
going outside and going for walks now that the weather's nicer or gathering with friends at a safe, socially distanced way. So definitely anywhere you can cut back is a good thing. Yeah, I like that. And it sounds like that could be really important when you're creating that plan we talked about, kind of mm -hmm. put that right in the plan. So mm -hmm. I like that a lot. What about consolidating? That's your fifth tip. Now, what sure. exactly does that mean? So consolidating your debt is a way of taking, if you have lots of different debts in lots of different places, it can be very hard to make a plan to pay them off. It can just seem like every day of the month you have a different bill to pay. So if there's any way that you can kind of lump it all together or lump as much together, particularly with credit cards, um, some people find that very incentivizing when it comes towards paying down debt and tracking their expenses. So for example, one way to do this is using a credit card with a 0% APR mm. offer. And what that is, is a credit card that has for a short period of time for new car holders, no interest. So sometimes you can transfer your balance from other credit cards to one with a 0% APR offer. And then it gives you a chance to make payments towards that credit card without having to make those high interest payments. And it gives you a leg up in paying down that debt. When you also talk about consolidation, and I recently had someone ask me to ask you about this, yes. um, you know, you'll often see those ads, you know, we can help you go to the credit card company and deal we, with this. Are yeah, those good I, or no? no? I'm so glad you asked about oh, that. Good. There are nonprofit credit counseling services. They don't typically advertise on the radio. Um, you know, there's for, there, I mean, one of the the biggest and best ones in the country is the National Federation for Credit Counseling, nfcc.org. That's a perfect example of a company that is nonprofit and there to help people who are really in dire straits when it comes to their debt. Mm -hmm. um, and I highly encourage anyone who is completely overwhelmed by their debt situation to reach out to NFCC. But uh, the things you hear on the radio, I hear them all the time where I live yes. when I'm in the car and it makes me so steamed because they basically say, oh, we'll help you. Don't pay those things. And what those kind of companies are is they're for profit credit counseling. And they'll basically tell you, stop paying your credit cards, stop paying your debts and we'll negotiate it for you. But mm -hmm. what ends up happening is your credit gets destroyed and those companies will charge you a fee. Your credit gets destroyed because once you stop paying those debts, those companies aren't saying, oh, well, she's working with a company. They're saying, you're not paying us and we want our money. So even if ultimately those for-profit companies are able to negotiate a lower amount, you've destroyed your credit. And if you've destroyed your credit, it takes a very long time to get your credit back on track and qualify for cheaper rates on your other loans, like car loans, you know, getting an apartment, they check your credit, you know, getting another credit card. I mean, having good credit is cheaper. Wow. I'm glad I asked you and I'm glad that someone had asked me to ask you. So thanks for that. Stay away from those. Uh, what's the saying? If it sounds too good to be true? Yeah, it usually is. Yeah. Okay. What's the bottom line here? Would you say what can anyone um, listening to this podcast, what can they learn? What can they try and do as a takeaway right now? Sure. I mean, what I would hope anyone would take away from this is that if, if you're experiencing a lot of stress and financial strain and it's due to credit card debt, it's not an impossible quagmire to get yourself out of. It might be difficult and it might take some time, but the most important thing is take a deep breath, you know, assess your situation and make a plan. Um, and that plan, it may be rearranging how you spend your money or it may be reaching out to a nonprofit credit counselor. It really depends on your individual situation, but it's not hopeless. And there is a way to improve your situation, no matter what the situation is. It's not impossible. Okay. that That's the great bottom line that probably everybody is relieved to hear that it is not impossible. That's a good thing and a good place to end here, Robin. Thank you so much for all of your advice. And uh, this again, Robin Sachs Frankel. And Robin is a personal finance expert with Forbes Advisor. Robin, thank you so much for helping. I know this is going to help a lot of people. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And again, this is your Pennywise podcast from Lee Enterprises. I'm Terry Barr and so happy to have you along with us.